This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so we're now going to go through and pull everything together that we've looked at by looking at the full weighted average cost of capital calculation. Now, the example that we have here is a comprehensive example. Um, I think it's just too comprehensive to be exam standard. Exam standard questions would have a little bit less information and therefore make it a bit easier to digest. This one here uh, is just as a, an example to, to see that you understand all the, the component parts that feed in to your weighted average cost of capital calculation. So let's go through and have a look at it step by step. Uh, it wants us to work out the weighted average cost of capital. So if that's the case, if you're working out your WAC, then remember you need your, your tabular format, don't we? So we need to go through that and look at the form of finance. Uh, we need to look at the cost. We need to look at the market value. And then we look at the cost multiplied by the market value. So that table that we introduced right at the very, very start of the topic. Uh, so once we've got the table laid out as such, we need to go through and look at the forms of finance. So what have we got? Uh, well, here you can see that there are three forms of finance, aren't there? Uh, there are ordinary shares, uh, bonds, but just be careful. Those bonds are redeemable, aren't they? So it's a bit disappointing. Sorry. It means we're going to have to do an IRR calculation, uh, but it gives you, again, a good little bit of practice. And there's also a bank loan, isn't there? So when we're going through and looking at our finance, we have there, is it... The equity finance. We also have, is it the the redeemables, and also as well, we have a bank loan. Okay, excellent. Uh, what we need to go through and do then uh, is you could work out the cost first of all. It's normally easier to work out the market values uh, as opposed to diving in and looking at the costs. Uh, so what have we got? Well, the easiest one of the lot is definitely the bank loan, isn't it? So we'll get to E with the exclamation mark there. Uh, why? Because we just use the book value, don't we? So here we're looking at the market value. Uh, we're going to look at the market value. in thousands of dollars and the bank loan was there as four thousand thousand wasn't it okay excellent uh we can then go through and look at the bonds and the shares it's entirely up to you uh so if we go through and look at the bonds uh they are based on is it a 100 dollar block and they are $94, uh, $94 per block of 100. So if we wanted to do a bit of a working, so if we're looking at the market value of my debt, it was $94. We need to divide it by the $100 to get it on a per debenture basis. And then we go through there and multiply, I think, there are 6 million or 6,000, thousand of those debentures. Uh, if you tap that on your calculator, I think that gives you, is it 5640, okay? So I can put in, is it five, six, four, zero into my WAC calculation. Key bit, whenever you're looking at the debt, you always need to divide by 100 somewhere, don't we? Okay. Uh, if we go through and look at the shares, uh, the share price is currently there. Is it at $4? Just be careful, one of the important bits that you have there is that they have a par value of 25 cents 
So when you're working out the market value of the equity, yes, we know that it is four dollars per share, isn't it? But you need to take the four million dollars worth that are in issue and divide it. Is it by the twenty-five cents par value? to work out the number of shares that are in issue. I think if you tap that on your calculator, that gives you, is it 64,000? I can put the 64,000 there for my equity. Uh, total that up, I think it gives me 73640. Not, not too bad. Uh, we then need to work out the costs. Uh, so again, the bank loan is usually the easiest. Uh, you're told there that the bank loan uh, has a return, is it, of 5%. But remember, the return is basing us to, or asking us to work out a cost to the company, isn't it? If it doesn't cost the company 5%, uh, it's a little bit cheaper than that because of the tax savings and the tax savings that we get are there as 25%. So if we're going to go through that and work out, is it the cost of debt on the loan? You take the 5%, don't we? And multiply by one less the tax rate. Uh, tap that into your calculator. I think that gives you 3.75%. Okay. Uh, so substituting the 3.75. Remember, we need to put everything in as a decimal. So that's 0 0.0375. Okay. Uh, the redeemables, I'll just leave for a moment because that's the big, long, complicated IRR calculation. Uh, what we're going to look at next is to work out the cost of equity. Uh, cost of equity, uh, remember, is D0 1 plus G over P0 X div plus G. Okay, uh, So we need to look at the growth and see whether or not it's going to be calculated using the historic growth method or Gordon's growth. And then we will need to go through there and substitute that growth figure into the cost of equity formula, ensuring that we use P0 X div which is good, isn't it? Because first of all, the share price is X div, so there's no need to adjust a cum div to get to an X div figure. Uh, the dividend is there at 25 cents, and it backs up that it is an X div price by saying that it has just been paid. Uh, and it says is 10 cents higher than the dividend paid five years ago. So it's giving us a bit of information about what has happened in the past, isn't it? So we need to work out the growth rate. So that's the nth root. So here I think is that five years of the dividend today divided by the dividend five years ago. Well, it said that today's dividend of 25 cents is 10 cents higher than what it was five years ago. So that there must be 15. Okay, so it's 10 cents less than today's. Uh, tap that into your calculator, subtract 1. I think you get a growth rate is that there of 10.76%. Uh, do just be careful, that's not the cost of equity, is it? That is the growth rate of the dividends. So what we can then go through and do is work out the cost of equity. Uh, cost of equity, take the dividend today, which is D0, 0 0.25 and multiplies that by 1 plus the growth rate. I then divide by the price x div, which is 4, and I then add on that growth rate. Uh, tapping that into your calculator, I think it gives you 17.68%. Okay. Remember, in order to then use that 17.68%, we need to go through there and put it in as a decimal. 
into my weighted average cost of capital calculation, okay, uh, 0 0.1768, uh, or to be consistent with the model answer, uh, let's just keep it there, shall we, at 0 0.1778 atomizers, is it, okay. Uh, the redeemables, working out the cost of debt on redeemables is always a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Uh, so we'll set you the challenge once we've set you up for it. Uh, on the redeemables, remember there is no formula. So we have to do the full IRR calculation. So you can see there that you have your interest. Is it at 8%? You have there, is it the tax rate? Uh, you have there, is it T0? Uh, and we need to go through there and look at what they are redeemed at okay uh, here uh, it just says they are redeemable in seven years time if you're not told what they are redeemed at specifically then you have to assume that it will be at the par value okay so it will be redeemed at par okay so yeah let's just say that it is redeemable and as it doesn't specifically say the redemption there is at 100 okay there we go uh, so you've got the price you've got the redemption value you've got the tax you've got the interest what i'd like you to do again just stop the video have a go and work it through yourself to try and work out a cost of debt please do try and work it yourself you've got this opportunity now to have a bit of a practice have a go and see how you get on and then restart the video okay good luck so, how did you get on? Uh, did you give it a good attempt? Uh, did you do it under your own steam? Did you look at the answer? Shame on you if you looked at the answer. No, don't use the answer. You won't have the answer in the real exam, will you? Okay. Uh, so, do try and do it under exam conditions as much as possible. If you're unsure, have a guess and see how you get on. So, uh, what have we got? Uh, well, again, uh, you can see it there on the screen. Uh, we've got the time periods, T0, 1 to 7, and then T7. Uh, the market value at the start is an outflow. Is that there's 94. An inflow at T7 when it's redeemed. Is it as 100? Again, when you're working out there, is it the cash flow on the interest? It's net of tax. So the 8 multiplied by 1 less the tax rate. Uh, and again, as always, I started off there. Was it with 10? Uh, and that gave me a negative MPV, didn't it? So therefore, to get a positive MPV, I need to go through there and reduce the discount rate, don't I? Uh, so I've gone through there and chosen 5%. Uh, I have a feeling that within exam style questions, when they ask you to do the linear interpolation, they'll actually give you uh, the discount rate to actually use. Okay, uh, But just see what's in the question. Uh, that then goes through there, doesn't it? You've got negative 13.5, positive 11.8 Here's the moment of truth. Drum roll, please. There we go. Uh, you should work out with a cost of debt for the redeemables. Is it there of 7.33%? Yeah, it's a couple of you nodding your heads going, yeah, well done, me. Yeah, I got that. Give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, a couple of you, just make sure that you've got the formula down there correctly. And that on the bottom, it's the higher... MPV, isn't it? Uh, minus, minus the lower. So that gives you a plus. Uh, just check that you've got everything correct there. Okay, excellent. All good. Yeah, let, let's move onwards and upwards, hey? Uh, so what you've got there is you have, is it 0 point, was it 0.073? Okay, uh, I'll stick with 0 0.073. Three, three again to be consistent within the answer. Uh, once you've done that, you then multiply across, don't we? Uh, your cost multiplied by your market value. So I think we have, is it 11, 328? I think we have, is it 413? And is it 150? Uh, when you total that up, It gives you 11891. Okay. Uh, once you've got that, you can then go through, can't we, and work out the weighted average cost of capital. So 
So to work out your weighted average cost of capital, you take the total of the cost multiplied by the market value divided by the total market value, which in this instance is the 11891 divided by the 73640 multiplied by 100% to convert it into a percentage and you get is it 16.1%. Wow. Okay. Uh, as I said at the start, that's a little bit too comprehensive for an exam standard question. But any of those components could be examined in any particular format. I think the key with your weighted average cost of capital is just to keep practicing the questions uh, because it's all about knowing what formula you can apply when and if there isn't a formula, what you then have to do. So usually uh, linear interpolation using your internal rate of returns for your cost of debt, for redeemable debt and convertible debt. Remember, there is just that extra little bit, isn't there, on your convertible debt, working out the redemption value being the higher of the cash and the expected share value. Okay, so keep working the questions. If you get stuck, you know where we are. Good luck and keep up the hard work.